I am so glad you're here this morning. Hey, I just want to say a word about next Sunday. I really do. Next Sunday evening, we've got two services, candlelight services. Uh, I am of that stature now where I forget things. <laughs> I am. Anyway, next Sunday night, I am looking for candle lighter young folks. So if you have a middle schooler, a high schooler, write their name down, tell them that they're going to help Pastor Dave, either at 5.30 or 7, I would appreciate it. Also, if you would mind, if you have an interest in helping young families enjoy a service next Sunday night, if you would be willing to sign up for Little nursery with those precious little ones up to age four, one hour, and then come to the service another hour. That would be great. Write your name and say, yes, I will help on that communication slip. We would appreciate that. Okay, so that's all next Sunday. What time is next Sunday morning service? Yeah, you know, because you're here. Okay, yes, so we're looking forward to a great weekend. How many of you are ready? Yeah, okay. In the midst of all this, though, I want to remind you. See that cross over there? That cross with the names on it reminds us every week that there are people in our lives who would not spend eternity in heaven if Christ were to come back today. And so let's not forget them. In fact, let's pray for them right now. Dear Father, we thank you for giving us the gift of eternal life. And Father, many of us in this room have that wonderful, eternal relationship through Jesus. Father, help us to never forget that you, your number one desire for each of us is that we would tell others about Jesus. Father, we ask that um, you would prompt our hearts and our minds Father, that we would get out of the box, so to speak, and out of our comfort zone and invite someone or literally tell someone about Jesus. And so, Father, this morning as we look at your holy word, may it be that we would set aside everything else and take a few minutes now to think about what your word has to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So this week I read this online thing from a a pastor. His name is Paul Tripp. He writes that he and his wife uh, gave birth to a little boy uh, who, after he was born and kind of starting to grow up a little bit, just didn't understand gifts. My wife, he goes on to write, my wife and I would go out when he was a little guy to buy what we thought was the perfect gift. He would tear open the gift and he'd end up playing with the box. It drove us crazy. Can you relate to that? Yeah, you probably have at some point in your your life. We decided, though, one Christmas, we we were going to find the perfect gift. The gift of all gifts that he would not be able to resist. Okay? The toy that would capture his attention like never before. We shopped and shopped. We found the gift. We were so excited. So he goes on to write, We gave him this gift, his gift, that morning, Christmas morning, and watched with great anticipation. He ripped open the gift like a little boy would and should, and actually got out the toy and began to play with it. Yeah! I said to myself, Whoa! I had such a feeling of victory. I had conquered it. It was great. Pretty soon I went into the kitchen to get something to drink. I was in there just a few minutes, and when I came out, he was sitting playing with the box. Does that ring a bell? It does for me. I remember when our kids were little. I remember when Sheila and I would go out and search for that awesome toy and bring it home, and what would they play with? The box, the wrapping paper. They had so much fun with the tissue paper that we had put in the box. Ah! What's up with that? You know, it's interesting. Christmas is always 
the time of the year where giving a gift is more significant than any other time, including birthdays and anniversaries. It seems like we try so hard to get just the right gift. I remember for years, Sheila would ask me, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, can I write a list? She said, sure. She had to shred them because the list ended up being so long. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating. But I love to write down what I, you know, this would be great. Get me this, get me this, get me that. Whoa. So let me ask you a question, okay? Just no, no response. I don't want you to embarrass yourself, and we don't really want to know, okay? Think about two years ago. What was the best gift two years ago on Christmas? I tried that this week. I failed. I could not remember what I got two years ago. And it's only been 24 months. I mean, really? Yeah, that's how it is. You know, we find that we humans, even at a very young age, love to play with the box. Our kids, our grandkids, we laugh, we take pictures of them playing with the box. But what happens as we get older? Sometimes I wonder if we aren't still playing with the box. You know what I mean. Jesus Christ, God's gift to mankind. God purposely planned that Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus God, would come to earth, take on the form of a human being, give his life as a sacrifice for anyone who would submit themselves to him, follow him, and accept the free gift of eternal life. And what typically happens... Unfortunately, time tells. We start out just like on Christmas morning or Christmas Eve night, excited, get the gift, play with the gift, have fun with the gift. And then a few days later, what happens to the gift? Well, it either gets broken or it's not as fun as it was or we just plain forget where we set it. Playing with the box, you know, what, how would you feel, and how would you feel this year, those of you who've gone out and you've already selected the gift that you want to give to that special, special person in your life. You've worked hard at it, you, you've searched, and you give them the gift And they just set it aside. You know, that's how it is quite often on Christmas mornings. Even if we open them on Christmas Eve. It just seems like as the day unfolds, well, here, I can only relate to what I experience each year. We get our family together and now we have grandchildren. They come and we all get excited and, and we wait until Christmas morning. Typically, oh, we do let them open one on Christmas Eve, but that's for another day in a therapy session. Okay, so we get around the tree and we distribute the gifts to everyone and then we all just start opening, okay? And it's really fun to watch the kids open gifts. I mean, it is so fun. You know, they just rip them up. <gasps> woo, 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 you know, and all of the excitement going. And then one by one, they set them aside to open up another gift. We all do it. And then at the end of all the gifts being open, which one do we play with? Well, if you're grandma and grandpa, you hope they'll play with yours. If you're mom and dad, you hope they'll play with yours. And that's what it ends up being. Just a round of opening up presents and then kind of setting some aside to do this and do that and what have you. Imagine how you would feel if your loved one received from you that special gift that you prepared for them, that you purchased for them, that you brought to them, and they unfolded it and they looked at it and they went, wow, thank you. And 30 minutes later, they can't remember where they set it. You know how you would feel 
I know how I would feel. Well, hey, you know, did I miss it? Did I do the wrong thing? You don't like it? Uh, What's going on? If they set it aside as an empty box. You know, that's what God has done for us. Let's be straight about it. God sent his perfect gift, his priceless gift of Jesus Christ to all of mankind. And all mankind has done down through the ages is just disregard it, set it aside. Oh, some people love to play with the trappings. Some people love to play with the box. Some people love to kind of horse around with this priceless gift. Oh, it's fun to put on at certain times. Sometimes it's even enjoyable to do it for a season. But when it comes to God's priceless gift, imagine how God feels when you and I take that priceless gift and treat it like a discarded box. This morning, I just want to take a few moments with you to reflect upon what the Bible gives us, what God gives us in his holy word in relationship to this priceless gift that he has given to us. And so we're just going to do a quick little scan, you might say, of Scripture and just think about what ties them all together. It's that one thought, the priceless gift. It all starts in uh, Isaiah chapter 9. You heard it earlier. It was read for you. Let's just think about it again. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah wrote those words and spoke them centuries before at just the right time when God sent Jesus to earth. And he told the people of his era, this is a gift. This child who's going to be born one day is given to us. And the entire government, what what is he talking about? The entire government. Well, think of it this way. Everything pertaining to man, everything, is upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ. He owns it. He paid with his life for it. He will accomplish his will in spite of it. Everything that you and I enjoy, everything that is even available today is because of Jesus Christ. Centuries before he was even born, It was spoken about. And then we come to Romans chapter 6. Here's a verse many of you probably could quote with your eyes closed. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. I love the word, the free gift. You see, that's what a gift really is. You can't earn it. You can't bribe someone to give it to you. You can't work for it. See, that's what's going to happen this weekend when you gather together and someone hands you a gift. They hand it because they want to. Ah, but here's the difference. Oftentimes, each Christmas, gifts are given because they feel obligated to do it. See, God feels no obligation. God isn't in heaven going, well, you know, uh, uh, mankind expects something. No, even before mankind ever knew they needed it, God planned it. And I love the word, the. It's a special little word used in Scripture that speaks about the only free gift. The only gift. When Jesus made these statements years after he was born, when he was about 33, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one, no one comes to God except through me. Jesus was very clear about it. His gift to you and me is not only free, 
It is the only gift that gives us eternal life. I love that. Then he goes on, the Apostle Paul writes in another letter. Actually, it's a second letter to a church in that time, in that region, uh, in the city of Corinth. And he writes in second letter, thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. You know, one of the things that I struggle with is trying to explain to another person how awesome the gift of eternal life is in my life. And I love the fact that God has given us the freedom to say it's inexpressible. I cannot, I cannot completely and effectively describe it to another person. I can only tell another person what it has done for me. It's like that gift, that unique gift that your loved one gives to you and you tell somebody else about it. Oh man, you ought to see the gift my wife, my husband, my son, my daughter, my mom, my dad, my aunt. Yeah, you can go on and on. That special person gave me this. Oh, it is so, so priceless. Is it? Sometimes I think we who have this gift, we unfortunately treat it like the gift from two years ago? Or the gift that was given a long time ago and we don't even remember it? But thanks be to God, it's inexpressible. Oh, then the Apostle Paul writes to a church in in the city of Ephesus and he writes these words. Again, many of you probably know these words by heart. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result, a result of works on my part or anyone else's. So that none of us can boast. I love the fact. It's a free gift of God. He paid for it. (laughs) One of the things about having kids is as they're growing up they come to you as a parent. I don't have any money. I want to get mommy and daddy. I want to get so and so a gift. I don't have any money. What am I going to do? And what does mom and dad do? That's all right. Got you covered. That's all right. Let's buy the gift and it'll come from you. Isn't that what we do as parents? Well, I assume that's what we do. I don't know how many of you, and please don't raise your hand, if your parents made you go out and get a job to buy gifts for Christmas, some of you may be working this season uh, because somebody told you, if you want to give a gift, get out there and earn it. God doesn't do that. God offers it. So ask yourself this question. What constitutes receiving a gift? How do you define someone receiving a gift? What do they have to do? What we all do on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning, we reach out. That's for me? That's the biggest box under the tree! That's for me? Woo! And God says, I give it to you. And many of us in this room, at some point in our life, have probably accepted that gift. It's a free gift. I love that. And then James, the Lord's half-brother, who became one of the leaders in the early church. And I, I believe it's because at a point in his adult life, he realized that his brother Jesus was really Jesus, Son of God, the creator of life. And so he writes a a little letter, and I love reading it. He really gets to the point. And here in James chapter 1, he writes, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Here's how I explain that for myself. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from my Heavenly Father. And my Heavenly Father is so unlike any human being because God does not give me a good gift or the perfect gift and then 20 minutes later yells at me 
It used to be I would get a gift and I'd be playing with it and having fun and being on the floor and doing my thing and pretty soon I'd hear Sheila in the other room. David, it's time for dinner. Oh, by the way, David, could you bring your granddaughters with you? Yeah. See, that's usually what happens. We get distracted. We, we enjoy something for a time and then somebody has to yell at us. Or somebody brings up a subject at the dinner table that makes us all mad. Or somebody brings up a a contrary political thought and everybody gets into the discussion. No, my friend, every good gift that you and I have ever received, even the perfect gift, comes from our Heavenly Father who doesn't get out of sorts with us. He loves us. Oh, he disciplines us. Oh, he corrects us. But he never mistreats us. I remember in my life growing up, there were times where I felt really like I was mistreated after the one mistreating me had given me a gift. And you know what's unfortunate too often in our lives as human beings? Even followers of Jesus, we allow those things to dictate how we handle ourselves today. I love what James says. Every good gift, every perfect gift is designed for my benefit by my Heavenly Father. I love that. You see, the reason is the perfect gift of God provides what no other gift can accomplish. Even the best gift you've found this year for your loved one, you're going, yeah, this, this will eclipse everything. And some of you have quietly hunted the internet. You've quietly gone to the malls. You've quietly searched out the stores. And you finally discovered, yeah, this is, this is the one. Then when I give this to her, Wow, her eyes are just going to light up. When I give this to him, his smile is going to get so broad. Yet it fades away. Some of us can't even remember last year, let alone two years. You see, God's perfect gift does something in your life and my life my friend that nothing ever can come close to it now lest you sit there and say well Dave you're you're making it sound like having Christmas is really a downer thing oh no 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 it's a great thing but let's be real the truly perfect gift only comes from God not from each other. It's great to give gifts. I'm looking forward to doing that this year. But the gift that lasts for eternity can never be replaced. So, I leave you with this. Are you going to choose God's gift? Or are you just going to play with the box? You know, a lot of people love the gift. We all do. I love this morning these people, first hour, second hour, who were baptized. It's a great reminder to me what a gift God has given to us. And many of us have given the words, I love you, Lord. I love you. I'll follow you, Lord. Thank you for the wonderful gift you've placed inside of my life. But then we allow life to intrude. And all we end up doing is playing with the box, the trapping. My friend, this morning, this year, my desire for you is that you would choose to enjoy and live out God's gift.